I don't know if you guys know why that's happening and if it's something I can do to change it, I would really appreciate that because this is supremely frustrating. I'm not going to lie. It, it's, it's enough to make me swear <laughs> if that wasn't already obvious. Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy gaming, and I have a lot to get you guys caught up on. Um, so the plan for this episode is to get you caught up on uh, where we're currently at in the game here. Um, and then we're going to probably open up some more uh, some Terran space so I can start getting into their space and getting rep with them and trading with them. And then after that, my tentative plan is to get started on the Boron uh, quest line, the Boron missions and the DLC, uh, because I think that'll probably be the most interesting to those of you who have uh, are already familiar with the game and have seen or experienced the older DLCs. Now, that's not to say we won't do anything with the older DLCs. We, I certainly plan to, you know, uh, experience the content of those to whatever extent it makes sense for this particular playthrough. Um, so that's coming up too. We still have to discover the main us uh, or the split free f families. We've only discovered Zyarth so far. Um, we have discovered the Terran Terrans, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And um, then, of course, do all the Boron stuff to get all the races themselves or our factions, I should say, um, discovered. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's get started with where we are with the station. Um, as you can see, we uh, I, I have expanded my station significantly. So I think the coolest way for us to to do the oh, actually, hold on. Uh, hold that thought. <laughs> I have a, a cool announcement to make to everybody. Um, I have decided, and because I've been enjoying this game so much, um, I have decided to invest in, wait for it, drum roll, da -da 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 -da, a Logitech X56 HOTAS setup. Um, so I'll show a, a picture of that when I edit the video. But yeah, I've, I've actually spent, before I started this recording, I spent uh, probably about an hour at least uh, mapping all the controls because there are a lot of buttons and gadgets and sliders and thingamadoodles <laughs> on this setup but it's really nice setup um, I also had I went down to the hardware store and got some carriage bolts and carefully drilled some holes in my keyboard tray of my desk so that I could actually mount these things because the the throttle um, on the um, the uh, the throttle side of the stick it's pretty stiff and it does have a, a dial that you can adjust the tension, but even with the tension, um, you know, dialed all the way down. In fact, I don't even really think it works very well, but it's still really stiff. And so that means that, you know, the whole base of it moves around when I'm trying to, to use the thruster. So so I basically bolted, bolted it down. I bolted the joystick uh, down too. So everything is nice and stationary and I can really, you know, get on it if I need to. Uh, during combat and so forth. So yeah, it's a nice stick, feels really good, and uh, lots of options, lots of buttons on it, and uh, should should enjoy it. So anyway, just wanted to let everybody know that uh, that I got that. Okay, happy birthday to me, even though my birthday's not till September. Okay, so anyway, let's uh, let's get started here. So I think what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna get in our ship here, Pegasus Vanguard, um, and we're gonna take command of the ship, and I'm just gonna kind of fly around and show you. And we'll actually take a, a look at them. I think it's this button that I undock. Yep. <laughs> it's going to take me a while to get used to all these knobs and buttons, guys. <laughs> There's a lot to this stick, but it's really cool. I'm very happy to have it. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's just kind of fly around, and we'll look at the station and as we talk about what we've added. So we'll get out into space just a little bit here. Um, what I'm going to do, too, is... Um, okay, let's do a, an all stop here. I'm going to turn the HUD and the ship off. I was asked to drop my cargo. Pirate, pirate harassment for Trader 4. Okay, let's um, make sure that they can get away from that pirate. Oh, so it's a... It's a I think this Prometheus... It's technically a freighter, but it's actually pretty well armed. Maybe we should try and capture one of those at some point. Um, 
But I just want to make sure this guy's going to get away from him. He's like slowing down for some reason. I don't know why. Come on, man. Get your ass out of there. Sometimes the AI is just so stupid. You know, that sounds negative. The, 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 it's not necessarily untrue, but it's actually pretty amazing, this game. You know, if you think about it, though. It's not perfect at all. Uh, and the AI is actually stupid sometimes, but it's, it's pretty cool overall if you think about how this game can control all of these ships, uh, uh, you know, and have them operate autonomously and stuff like that. So I didn't mean to sound negative there, but it it, it wasn't an untrue statement, though, either in some cases. Uh, so anyway, I think, I think he's going to be okay. There's like two of them. Uh, where is this at? This is in Trinity Sanctum. Okay. At some point, I probably will have like small strike forces that can p patrol these areas. But the problem at the moment is I just don't have enough of those. And unless they're really close um, to Grand Exchange, uh, if they are close to Grand Exchange, then what I'll do is I'll just pull off, you know, a dozen of my fighters and just send them after the pirate and have them go catch them and take them out. But this is a little far away. So. I, I could still do it. Well, maybe we should do it. I don't know. I think he's probably going to be okay for now. So let's just continue on here. All right, we got a lot of stuff to cover in this episode. Okay, so anyway, I want to take out the HUD or the ship and the HUD so we can really see what's going on here. All right, so you, as you can see, I have added a, uh, a large pier with uh, three docking points. This is called the E-Pier. And so now we can dock large uh, ships, large freighters coming in to bring uh, the goods or buy goods from our station. So that's cool. Um, I've added a total of three luxury docks. Um, so that gives us nine medium docking slots and 18 uh, small ship docking slots. So we have lots of room for ships to come in. Um, I have added a total of eight medium habitation modules. Uh, so we got six up top and then two along the bottom. Each one of those can hold 500 uh, people. Uh, so we so that means we can have a total of 4,000 people on the station. And for the station to operate at maximum efficiency per person, uh, it's actually up to about 4,800 now. So we need to add some more of these at some point. Um, but I, I'm not even at 4,000 yet. So once we get to 4,000, we'll, we'll worry about that when the time comes. All right. So if we go over here. As you can see, I have now added a, another solar panel uh, because with, with all the other stuff I've added to the station, we've needed, uh, we needed to add that because one wasn't going to be able to support everything. So we have two solar panels added here. And um, these things are actually really cool if you look, look at them up close with all the light, the little light show and stuff. Very neat. Very neat. It's, it's the little details that they've added to this game. They're just amazing. Um, down here, I have a Talati. Uh, medical uh, supply uh, factory thing to, ma to, drop my cargo. to make medicine. All right, let's see what the hell's going on with this. Uh, shift H. Is it the same guy? Oh, it's station hauler one. Okay, he's being harassed by a pirate raider, and he's close to us. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Alpha Strike Force, and we're going to pull off a handful of these fighters, and we're going to tell them to take this guy out. Okay. And hopefully the hauler can get away from that raider. Looks like he might be heading towards the foundry to dock. Come on, man. Get moving. Get away from that guy. Okay, so it looks like maybe the raider is... Well, I don't know what he's doing. I've got more ships coming through here, too, but this is a very high traffic area for us. Okay, our fighters are on the way. 
All right, he's actually firing on our ship. That is not looking good. Okay, let's just tell you to go directly there and dock. And I need you, this to be the f top priority. Just get, oh, we lost him, son of a bitch. See, just a stupid, stupid AI there in that particular case. Um, I don't remember how, I mean, it sucks to lose a ship. The worst thing about this is losing the pilot, though, because, you know, because we've taken so long to try and level them up. And I just don't remember if that pilot was very experienced or not. But anyway, here's come, here comes our fighters to get revenge, so at least we'll... Hopefully they don't derp out, because sometimes they slow down and then let the guy get away too, so it's, it can be a bit irritating. And these guys will run away too when they, once they know I'm coming after them. Which is supremely frustrating because they, you know, these guys are fast ships. They shouldn't be around they should just be going after him and look at that they're letting him get away it's so frustrating <laughs> i don't understand come on you guys get him now they're closing in on him see but they slowed down again i don't understand why do they do that why 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 See, now they're now they're just on a on a coffee break. I don't know, maybe it's because their pilots are not high enough level, but I mean, that is not a complicated thing. See, he's going to get away from them through the gate and then they're going to chase him across sectors and Sometimes they never catch them either. Yeah, they slowed down again. So, I don't know. If you guys know why that's happening and if it's something I can do to change it, I would really appreciate that because this is supremely frustrating. I'm not going to lie. It, it's it's enough to make me swear. <laughs> if that wasn't already obvious. Oh, geez. Yep, he's, he's through the gate now. I mean, they'll probably still chase him, but sometimes it's just... An exercise in futility I don't know let's let him keep trying for now and oh my gosh <laughs> we like we went way away from the station here all right so anyway back to this um so the reason I have a Talati medical facility is because the wharf in Argon Prime finally got completely destroyed, and along with it, the Argon representative. Um, and at the time, at the time, I wasn't able to. There wasn't any, or weren't any more Argon wharfs available. Um, since that time, though, uh, and so, you know, I, I had to go to Talati Space and, and buy a Talati um, medical facility and a Talati uh, Sunrise Farm, which is this thing up here, in order to make my own medical supplies. Because we need those to support, you know, the the people on board. And this is what the Sunrise Farm looks like, too, by the way. It's really cool looking. Um, so, let's strafe up a little. So anyway, that's why I have, um, whoops, uh, why I have a Talati instead of an Argon um, medical facility. Uh, what I was going to say, though, is since that time, we have, um, uh, or Argon has now placed a new representative on in their shipyard in Argon Prime. Um, so if we look at the map, uh, we can now see that they have a new representative uh, in their shipyard. Uh, right here, so Selene Yatar. But this is where my satellite is. That's where the wharf used to be, and there's it's completely destroyed now. Uh, and it kind of didn't matter anyways because the wharf never they never rebuilt the wharf, so I couldn't land there anyway. 
Uh, what that means, the, of course, is that we can continue now buying more modules from Argon later on in the future as needed, as long as they don't let their shipyard get destroyed. Okay, so anyway, that's why we have Talati. Um, it doesn't matter in the long run. I mean, as long as we have medical supplies, that's what we need to support our facility. Okay, so if we fly over here now, um, this is our wheat farm that we have set up. It's kind of cool looking. It's got the uh, what I presume are the the seedlings on this side, the water supply over here, and then the actual wheat field is over here with that robotic uh, harvester thingy uh, taking care of it. So yeah, really neat. Li love those little details. If we go down lower now, we have uh, our spice production facility. So this is growing uh, spice plants in this cylindrical structure here. And we need that both for medical supplies and for food rations. Very neat looking. And then um, let's see, down here is our cattle farm. We've actually had the cattle farm for quite some time, but we haven't actually looked at it. So let's take a quick look at it. Uh, it is quote unquote upside down, even though there's no upside down in space. Um, but it's just the way that the connectors worked. So this has, for those of you who've never seen it, this has like a little pasture area inside with some cattle, our new beef, and some uh, a little stream of water running through. And then there's a larger dome over here, which also has um, cattle inside of it. And we can actually fly inside of here and take a look too. So really neat, just love those details. Okay, so that takes care of our uh, our food and res. Uh, I, I don't know what you'd call it, but it's just all the all the kind of more resource types of facilities that we need for the plant itself to to operate is over on this side of the station. Okay, so let's go over here now. And oh, I didn't talk about this. This is this is actually the food ration module too. So this is what makes the food rations for our population and for sale too for the excess. So that's what that guy looks like. This is where they make the hamburgers. Pretty neat looking. And every time I fly by here in my ship, it just smells wonderful too. Okay, so let's shoot over um, to here. And this is our, our storage array. So we have our original small storages uh, on the same level as the station itself. And then I've added quite a few more large storages above. I think this is the same configuration that it was that we did on camera in the last episode. So we have large um, container storage going out that way. This is solid storage. So that's for ore, ice, silicon, those kinds of things, nividium. And then our liquid storage, which is actually gas storage, is over on this side. So that's where our helium, hydrogen, and methane is stored for the station. Okay. Over this next section over here is for our intermediate production. So we have, uh, this is our, um, what's it called? The coolant? Mass transporter, short range transporter, mass does, transporter. Doesn't look B. like, does it let me select this directly? No, it doesn't let me se select it directly, but actually if we fly right up to it and the ship selects it, it should say coolant or superfluid coolant thingy, I think. Yeah, maybe not. Anyways, it's the super fluid coolant factory is what this is. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's neat, man. I never even noticed that before. That is so cool. Again, the little details, right? So yeah, we have our super fluid coolant going there. Um, I ended up adding two silicon wafer uh, refineries. It's got like the little fire coming out the top there. Um, yeah, this is so neat. Let's, um, 
if we if we go over here you can see the the chunks of silicon being fed into the uh, crusher here and that's smat those are I'm assuming smashing them down and then they're being smelted here in the flames I'm still trying to whoa <laughs> easy there feather touch still trying to get used to this controller it's a it's a lot different than than the uh, thrustmaster I had before oh man that is just the neatest detail look at that you guys yeah so it's sending the silicon through and it's it's um smelting that and then over here we now have it in its molten form I've got a if you guys are familiar with the X56 it's got a couple of little joysticks and I have uh, one of those joysticks is set to strafe and it's an analog so that means I can do all directions but it's it, it, I'm just getting used to it that's the bottom line so that's why I'm kind of running all over the place but anyway look at that so it's got the molten silicon um, running through there and then it's pouring it into these containers here and then that's dropping down and going somewhere else to probably cool and then maybe I don't know maybe this other section here is like the slag coming off it or something but that is just just cool absolutely love those details okay so anyway I got two of the silicon refineries because one of them was not enough to keep up with making the microchips uh, for the claytronics so I added two of those and I also have two microchip factories which I think that's what these things are uh, maybe I don't know can't remember what these are actually if we get right up to it doesn't it highlight it and tell us what it is I don't know hmm. okay well anyway so yeah we have also what else do we have on here some of these are microchips some of them are graphene um, I, oh you know what we could do here let's do an all stop if we just go into the menu into here and we do plan build okay so we're over here right at the moment okay so those two thingies are the microchips this is quantum tube that's the superfluid coolant that we already looked at these are the graphenes here that's antimatter cell production and that's uh, those are microchip and then these two are the silicon wafer and that's oh that one's a refined metal oh actually yeah you know what we were looking at the refined metal production that's what we were looking at for hull parts ah okay so the silicon ones are the, are down here I have a, a couple more down there that's what that was okay that makes a little more sense because I thought it was kind of odd that silicon was molten but I don't know maybe it is <laughs> um, so I think these are our microchip production facilities and they even kind of have a little bit of a circuit board look to them in fact maybe that those are the circuit boards they're curing them or something I don't know neat looking though very neat um, so yeah these guys are the silicon refineries here the other one we were looking at was the uh, for the hall for, uh, for the metal refined metal really cool and this is the antimatter cell thingy production strafe up a little bit here this even has like a little dock in it 
I mean, it's not an actual functioning dock, but we can fly through it. That's just so cool. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys think I'm overdoing this a little bit, but again, it's the little things, right? It's just makes, makes it all that much better. Uh, okay. So anyway, that, uh, takes care of our intermediate products. And then this section has our, our end products. So here we have a Claytronics production. So this thing is making our clay claytronics here. And then the other one is our um, hull parts. So yeah, that one's quote unquote upside down. And then this one up here, I believe, is the one making the hull parts for us. It's got a little production line going on up there. Let's uh, take a look at the top here. And look at that. Look at that factory going down in there. Isn't that neat? I <laughs> love it. Making hull parts, baby. Or wait, is this Claytronics? Here, let's take a look again. I might, might have that bass backwards. The top one's hall part and the bottom one's claytronics. Cool. It's got ventilation, venting the sparks out off, off into space. And then over here, it's delivering the parts, putting them into containers, it looks like. And ready for building, shipping off and building stations. Oh, neat. We can even fly down in here. Whoa. This throttle, man, is <laughs> so sensitive. I could set it to be just a one-way throttle and then use one of the scroll wheels for reverse, but... I don't know. That might mess me up in combat, at least until I got used to it. So cool. Okay. So yeah, that uh, gives you an update, guys, on where the station is. Uh, like like I've said and now shown you, it's expanded significantly, and uh, it's bringing us in money. So I I don't know that that it's bringing us in as much money as our five, th three or higher star traders are, but. It's definitely bringing us in money, so it's a, it's doing its job uh, for where it currently is. Whoops, wrong button. <laughs> Pegasus Vanguard. I uh, one of the toggle switches on, Greetings. on my um. Get out of that seat. On my new uh, stick here is for docking, but I I hit the get out of my chair one instead. So now. Docking granted. There we go. Let's bring our our ship uh, back to here. Ship done. cockpit. Now I go down to, it's an honor to get out of my seat and then use the stick to walk out. Yeah, it's going to take me a little bit, of, a little bit of getting used to. Um, I mean, there's there's probably 40, 40 to fifty different controls on these t two sticks combined: buttons, sliders, analog. Accesses and so yeah, it's gonna, it takes a little bit to get of getting used to compared to the what 15 I had on the Thrustmaster uh, T uh, that I had before. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the logical overview of our station here. Um, so if we go here and we go to logical overview, here's where we're currently at. Uh, so we're produce we have two energy cells producing. Um, everything that you see in the green, of course, is excess which can be sold off. I do have a dedicated gas seller and a dedicated solid seller. Uh, and the way you make them dedicated is you don't, and you guys told me this in the comments too, by the way, uh, you don't put any kind of 
uh, laser, mining laser or turrets on them. So if you just set them up without any type of any way to mine, then they become basically a, a delivery vehicle for uh, or vessel rather for you know solids and or liquids. So I got one assigned to selling excess gas, one assigned to selling excess solids. Um, and then now we have our intermediate products here. And as you can see, we're doing very well uh, in our production. We have plenty of excess, which means sales for us. And then over here, we got our next level intermediate products. Um, so, well, some of it's next level. Some of it's just, you know, its own stuff. Uh, the quantum tubes and the microchips would be the second tier. Uh, these are all first tier items here, of course. And then if we go over a little further, we've got our end products, which are the food rations, the medical supplies, and the claytronics. We have quite a few extra food rations, but we're only a little over halfway to our full capacity workforce. However, I've already got this set, though, to what I'm predicting will be the maximum uh, need for that, so I, I don't have to adjust it later on. Okay, so yeah, we're doing pretty good on the factory. I'm having a lot of fun with this and just enjoying the way X4 works with the station building and so forth. I have, I have some questions for, uh, for you guys uh, that I haven't really been able to get a, a clear answer on from looking myself. Um, if we, wh why do I need trade drones? What do trade do drones do in a factory? Uh, I can't imagine they fly out to another sector and trade stuff. So what's their purpose? I'm not really fully, uh, uh, you know, cargo drones, I guess they're called. I'm not really fully understanding what the purpose of those are. Defense drones obviously make sense. Uh, repair drones make sense. In fact, I need to get some repair drones going because we do have uh, a little bit of hull damage, not from being attacked, but from ships being stupid and clunking into the side of the, the station and so forth. Um, so I understand defense and repair drones, but I don't understand the purpose of cargo drones. So if you could let me know that in the comments, that would be much appreciated. Uh, as far as repair drones grow, uh, go, rather, um, if we say restock these automatically, um, I don't know how many is enough, maybe 20. You're that then means we're going to need drone components and smart chips. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and so my my station haulers should start adding these components to the list then uh, to start making drones for us. Um, I don't know. We have a pretty large station, so twenty may not be enough. Why don't we go? Why don't we go fifty? Okay. I'm going to hold off on the cargo drones until you guys tell me what their use is. Um, defense drones, you know, we do have times when we pull the force away, uh, you know, the force away from here to go do combat. And that means our station's not really very well defended. So why don't we also add, say, like, whoops, what just happened there? Yeah, restock automatically. Let's add 50 defense drones, too. Okay, and then, yeah, like I said, I'll hold off on the cargo drones until you guys tell me what their purpose is. Uh, I just don't understand really what they do. I, I thought I read somewhere that they unload the large ships much more quickly, but if that's all they do, that doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal unless you had just an absolutely enormous station with ships lined up waiting to drop stuff off. Then I, then I could maybe see... Uh, you know the usefulness of that but for where we are now if that's all they do I don't really see the point um, unless you guys you know uh, let me know what their purpose is and we'll go from there okay so that gets us all updated on the station my goodness we're already out of time you guys um, shoot okay well here's the thing then um, what we're gonna do is or what I'm gonna show you is let's go into the map and um, Looks like our fighters returned, so I don't know if they, they either lost that bastard or they took him out, but anyway, they're back home now, and I'll have to replace that one station hauler that we lost. It happens. It's just the way this game works, and until I can, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, who, who did I have selected when I did that? Fighter Zero? I hate it when that happens, man. 
He doesn't have an extra order. I told somebody to go there. <laughs> I don't know who it was. <laughs> um, it wasn't Alpha Strike Force. Oh man, I hate it when that happens. Because since I don't know who it, who it is. There's not an option for canceling. If you bring any creatures on board, please make sure they are chained. Well, any all right. So hopefully I'll I'll notice who that was. I mean, I'm not you you can tell what their current commands are in this little list here. And I don't see anything that looks out of the ordinary so okay well i'll worry about that later we don't we're running out of time here okay so anyway what i was going to show you next is that um i was in antiquity memorial and i decided to pop through this gate just to see where it went because i had not done so and it actually leads into uh Sagaris space or cigar space however you pronounce that um, which is a terran faction and so what since i discovered it i went ahead and sent um the Pegasus, which I have now renamed as Scout 1, down here to explore. And I also have a courier ship, uh, which is a which is the the, the small parented trading ship uh, that's doing some trading here in Sagaris or Sajaris. And we are now at level 10 at least with them as a result of that uh, level 11 now so that means we can go uh, get our first promotion with them so what i want to do is i want to um go i, I know that or i'm a, i'm pretty sure that this is going to lead into terran space i mean it only makes sense that it would um so i'm pretty sure that's what that's going to do so what we're going to do is we're going to go unlock the terran sectors and then i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to start sending traders down into those sectors um to start getting rep with them now for the main terran faction i guess if we go back here yeah the terran protectorate we're minus 15 so i'm going to have to do the same thing with them that i've done with the other the other ones where i'm gonna to have to take my fleet down there and start you know hopefully killing enemies and get an to the point where I can dock with them so that I can start doing some trading. Um, the thing is, though, is I don't know if Xenon go into Terran sectors. So if that doesn't work well for me, I'll probably have to take some local missions from them to get the rep. But I want to get in good with them because they have some really good ships and some really good stuff. Uh, plus, you know, we just want to open up their territory for trading purposes anyway. Okay. Um, so how much of that I'll show on camera, I'm not really sure. My tentative plan, like I said, uh, was to start the Boron campaign in the next episode. But if I feel like we have enough interesting content uh, to start getting in good with the Terrans, we might do one more episode uh, doing that first before we start the Boron campaign. But it is my intention uh, to do that as soon as possible. All right, guys, with that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you.